We have done two days of material. Our first day, we talked about area, all kinds of areas, such as we see here. Um, for part of your homework, you did the area of a sector that's where cheese much, and then our arc length that's part of your circumference. Nothing new with that, just the fraction of your circle times whatever it is you want. If you want area, then you multiply by area. If you want part of your circumference, you multiply by circumference. Okay, um, and then our area formulas, these are the two kind of big new ones that we had. Our regular polygon is one half apothem times perimeter. My apothem goes from my center to the side, that's the side of half. My radius, even though it's not in our formula, sometimes we need it. My radius goes from my center to the vertex, I think, the angle of half. Um, rectangle, you're going to do square, you're going to do parallelogram. Um, it's just the same as a rectangle. So nothing too crazy there. Triangle, you're going to do triangle, you're going to do. Rhombus and kite was our other new one. So rhombus and kite is just one half diagonal times right diagonal. Okay, so that was our day one. Then day two, last class, we did prisms and cylinders. We had volume, lateral area, and surface area. It's the same formula for both prisms and cylinders. Our volume is area of our base times our height. For prisms, we can have different shapes for our bases. So depending on what your shape is, that will change your area here. Um, for cylinder, what is the base of a cylinder? A circle. Oh, look, that's what we can have a cylinder. Our base is a circle. And our lateral area is the area around the sides. Our surface area is the total surface area, which includes then the pieces. So our lateral area, which is perimeter times height. Um, if it's a circle, cylinder, then my perimeter is just circumference times height. Height is the distance between our bases. Yeah, yeah. Surface area, state lateral area, and add on our two bases. Yeah, All right. So that's what we've learned in the last couple classes. Today we're going to learn about pyramids and cones, which conveniently are very similar in formulas to this one. You do need to commit all these formulas to memory. Allow me to say again, some of you are not paying attention. You do need to commit all of these formulas to memory. Yes. No, really. You must have these memorized. Yeah. Now, most of them you've already memorized, so really have just a couple new things. This guy, this guy, you're new. And then these ones are similar. Today is very similar to this, so it's not too bad. I have a question. Yes. Why do we need to memorize the formulas? So that you can do it. So well, like, like, in real life, will we ever be in a position where we will not be able to sit at a room or look it up beforehand? Yeah, it's very possible. But also, too, you need it for later. Like, like, ask this yeah, but in the first class, will we not be able to write it down? So, so, like, in fact, because we have certain problems, we have a really great right. time these and optimization things, so we don't have to go back to the class. Yeah. Yes, of course. Yes, wait till I move out of your picture. Oh, yeah, I gotta take a picture. But I want to remember this. You may take a picture of course. 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 You may take a are we just listening to the That's a very nice circle. Okay, save that picture and then put it away. Yeah, he's got to send it to me. Uh, when will we ever not be able to use it? To the game. When you don't have it on you. Yeah, I got to send it to the game. And keep it on me so I can use it. So <laughs> keep it on, he says. <laughs> okay, so today we're going to be adding in volume, lateral area, surface area of cylinders. Um, sorry, pyramids and cones. Again, they're very similar to those ones there. Okay, so the next class we'll have our quiz and we'll finish up our material for this unit. It is a short unit. Um, so just the one quiz. Um, sorry, the teacher before me uh, off the board. Oh, it looks really big. Oh, there's four. What? Okay. 
Um, so this is a short unit, so you have just the one quiz, and then we go off to spring break. When we come back from spring break, we will review and then have our test. Now, they have not told me the official dates for the SOL because they're still trying to figure out who is taking the SOL. Um, but we are operating based upon the original date given to us, the 15th. If that changes, it won't change this unit, it will just change the unit. Okay, so our test will stay here unless something crazy happens, like a random blizzard and frost snowed or for down. Oh yeah, when school could be please don't do that. They'd probably be caught in like a game. Okay. Do we have any questions with our case here? Yeah, maybe the game's school. Any questions with the game? Probably the Is there anyone that did not put down their tally marks? Yeah, how many developed could be in? Jackson, when you got the paper, which way did you pass it? Yeah. Oh, you're gonna have to do Did you pass it to Jackson? Yeah. Okay. How did you end up there? All right. Um, was there anyone else that did not get to put a child? Does anyone have to know who Jordan has? Oh, oh, sorry. Sorry. Bella's For this class? Yeah, uh, Looks like Rusha. No. No, yeah. The Bella's game. False. With a close Bella two in second. Of course. Whoa. So you put it down. Wait. Did you not put your stuff? Did not. I told you, Jackson. You did. Uh, I did. I did. Yes. You guys are. No. Wait. Miss Margaret. Explain this. So you said. What period you have besides? No. 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 Is that because that's what I said? It's so far you have. Yeah. Yeah. Who do you have? Goku. Oh, where did you put your tally? You put them right here. Alright. Let's try this. So, although you do have to commit our new formulas to memory, they are based upon um, what we know about prisons and cylinders. So if you know your formulas for prisms and cylinders, you can make just a couple adjustments and have your formulas memorized as well. So again, prisms, two bases, cylinders, two bases. But for cones and pyramids, just one base. For prisms, we could have whatever shape we wanted for our base. For pyramids, whatever shape we want for our base. For cylinder, our base is a circle. Now, if we were to take a look at our cone versus our cylinder, in terms of volume, which one is going to have more volume, the cone or the cylinder? The cylinder. So there is more within my cylinder than within my cone. Now, let's also take a look at our surface area. Kelly had said that our surface area for a cone only has one base. So if we compare a cylinder and our cone for a surface area, which one's going to have? So very good. Good. Um, okay. So we're gonna start off with our prisms and transitioning to pyramids from the About how much if this is my cylinder and I were to have a cone of the same base, how much do you think that would be? Let's say that my uh, Let's just say my cylinder had a volume of 60. How much do you think the cone's volume? 30. A third? 35. 35. Any other thoughts? The brilliant two thoughts for the whole class. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, how about you say to your shoulder partner, do you think the cone would be like a fourth of it, a half of it, a third of it, two fifths of it? How much do you think the cone would be? Talk to your shoulder partner if you want to talk to me. Yeah. All right. Is there anything to not get our notes for today? Jackson, do you mind if I hand back the notes, please? Oh, yeah, he's in. Oh, did I accidentally grab count correctly? Jackson, did you hand back the notes? 
Please hand back the notes. Okay. So for our pyramids, now that you have your notes for that, you can probably see how our pyramid compares to our prism. Our volume formula for our prism, which is simply area of our base times height. For a pyramid, for a pyramid, it is the exact same formula, but what's different now? Third. One third. So our pyramid is essentially a third of what you would have had if it was a base, or if it was a prism. So our volume is one third error base times height. So very similar. Now, as Kelly said, our total surface area is just going to have one less base. So our total surface area is still the same formula, but notice that we only have, that we add on one area of our base rather than two, because there is only one base area. All right, now my lateral area is a little different. My lateral area for prisms was simply perimeter times height. The reason for this is that if I look at my lateral faces, what shapes were all of my lateral faces? Rectangles. And rectangles was simply length times width or base times height. And if I were to look at all my um, bases of those rectangles, that was just the perimeter. So we had perimeter times height. Um, actually, let's go ahead and recap these words. So lateral edge, base edge, um, edge, base, and height. Where is my tissue? What is a base? Um. More than two points. More than two points. What is a face? The plane. Good. It's like the plane or the sides of our 3D shape. Um, what is an edge? Where the plane is. Where two faces meet. Then what would be the difference between a lateral edge and a face edge? Who can explain me what the difference would be between a lateral edge and a face edge? Uh -huh. Yeah, so where our base meets our sides, so all these edges that are a part of our base, these are called base edges. On a cylinder, what would our base edge be? Um, and then our lateral edge is going to be essentially the height between those faces. So it's going to be the edges of my lateral faces. So when we take a look at our prisms here, oh wait, what's a vertex? It's our vertex. Oh, it's a vertex. The corners. The corners is a good word for it. It's where our edges meet, or a corner. Okay. Okay. So our prisms, we can have any shape for our bases. Pyramids, we can have any shape for our bases. Now you'll notice on the front side we have all squares for our bases, but if we take a look at the back side. Oh my god. Maybe. What are some shapes we see on the back side? Ooh, a hexagon comes up again? Yep. Kathy, keep that head up. Natalie, keep that head up. Oh, sorry. I just saw Kathy's head go down and got one. So we have an equilateral triangle as one of our bases. I have a hexagon as one of my bases. Again, I can have any shape for my base. Now, with our prisms, with our prisms, our faces, our lateral faces, were all rectangles. What do we have for our lateral faces on our pyramids? What are our lateral faces? Triangles. So our lateral faces are triangles. Because of that, that's why our lateral area formula has changed. If I were to take a look at just one of my triangles here, they told me that this is 10, my base edge is 10. They gave me my height of this triangle. I said this was 13. How do I find the area of this triangle? One half base times so height. Good. One half base times height or base times height divided by 2. Now, our base triangle is our base edge here, and our height is the height of our lateral side. So, notice our lateral area formula before it was perimeter. Well, now it's one half perimeter times L. 
our one half comes from our fact that our areas are triangles. We have one half. If I were to do all my bases added together, that's my perimeter, so that's the base part. And then our height of our triangles, we refer to as this L. This is called our slant height. Our slant height is just simply going to be the height of those bases, those triangles. Our height is our normal H height. This is our height of the pyramid itself. So this is our H height, the height of your pyramid, so from your base to that point at the top. And then this is my slant height. And that's the height of the triangle face on the side. Questions about the difference between those two? Okay. So my lateral area form is one half perimeter times the slant height, not the height of the shape. Okay. Otherwise, everything else. Now, because our faces are triangles, we're going to be using Pythagorean theorem. We're going to be using 30, 60, 90, 45, 45, many triangles. And what's the other thing we use with right triangles? Sine, cosine, and tangent could appear as well. So right triangles never go away. They're here to stay for the rest of your life. Yay. Yay. OK. Um, so again, really, it's just plug and chug into your formulas at this point. Those are all the differences. It's not just plug and chug. All right, for number one, um, they gave us our slant height. Our slant height is 13. And they asked us to find our actual height of the shape. So I'm just going to go ahead and redraw this triangle. Our height is what's perpendicular. So we have it's a right triangle. My height, we don't know. My slant height, or the hypotenuse here, would be 13. How much is this? Five. Five, but it's still put in half. Okay, how am I going to find H? What do I have to do? Uh, oh, you have to find the hypotenuse. Find the hypotenuse, and how do we... Well, we have our hypotenuse, we have to find the oh. height. How do we do that? That's what that right there. All right, I want you guys to go and solve for H. Find your H using the diagram there. Yeah, no, every time I test, I'm like, I know it's 169, but I always gotta check and like do it. So it wastes like a minute. Every time. Well, it's good because you can do three squared to nine, so you know it has to end at nine. Yeah. Four squared to six, you have to end at six. So, H equals 12. As good as, I was just about to say, it looks like a lot of us get the same thing. H is 12. 12. Oh, wow. Good. Okay. So this is the height of our object. I don't have a prism to look at, but in terms of our cone, that would be from the center to the top there. Okay. Um, 12 what? Units. Okay. So now area of our base. What shape is my base? Square. 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 So my area is? 100 units squared. We're still looking at our base for the perimeter. What would my perimeter be? 40 units. 40 units. Okay, and then let's pause there. Do we have any questions on our height, our area of our base, or our perimeter? Okay, moving on to volume. So our formula for volume is one third area of our base times our height. And my base is 100. My height is 12. I can do 100 over 3 first and then multiply by 12. But I think I'd rather use the commutative property. What's one third of 12? Four. Four times 100 gives us 400. All right, lateral area. Lateral area is one half. Think of your triangle, one half. All my base edges added together would be my perimeter. My perimeter is 40. And my slant height, because we're talking about our face is on the side here. So my slant height, which is 30. 
So 20 times 13, which gives us? Okay. Half of 40 is 20. So you type is 13 is 26, just half on your screen. All right, and then our total surface area. Same idea as before. We add all of our lateral area to 260, and we have just one base now. So we're adding on just one area in my base, which is 100. So we get 360. Not too painful, right? We're just plugging and chugging. The key thing here is knowing your formulas and being able to deal with your right triangles. Do we have any questions with that? Um, okay. Oh, I want to take a look at number five. So number five, they've given a square root of 353. What does that represent? What does that 353 represent, Nicole? So slant height is going to be the height of my triangle on the side there. So it's not that guy. It's talking about this here. What do we call this? Lateral edge. What is that, Joda? Lateral edge. Lateral edge. Yes. Do we have a formula for a lateral edge? No. But if this is my slant height, which is perpendicular to my base here, my base edge, what type of shape does that mean? Triangle. Right, right triangle. So we have, um, that right triangle was not very perpendicular. My smart board is a little small. Okay, so I, I don't know my slant height. I've got to find that. I know my base edge is root 353. Um, how much is this guy? Four. Eight. Eight. Okay, go ahead and do the there and solve for your slant height. You look so enthused right now. I don't know why, I just, I just found it so stupid. Like, I'm trying to do this. This is why. But I just. Here. Wake up, my dear. Just give him some drugs. No, it's not. Uh, that won't be good. Okay, find your slant height. Yeah, they gave us the edge rather than the same edge. Okay, so we have to do this one. Let's get started. Oh, wait. Six, six, six. Whoa. That's not okay. Are you I know that's a I'm seeing some of us are pausing at this point. What did we get L squared equal to? 289. We did not get L squared equal to 289 double check. Am I crazy? What's that? We're not done yet, so we have to start yeah. L stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you just walk in the store, okay? Are you, what are you thinking? Are you okay? Oh, okay. You're not done yet. What is the square to 289? 17. 17. You'll want to make sure you know that one. All right, so my slant height is 17. Okay, so then how do I find my height? Thank you, Jackson. That was, that was actually Sam's. Uh, I'm Sam's. Yeah, 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 I
Do we have to do another right triangle? Yeah. If we take a look at our height with our slant height. So this is our actual height of our solid. We just found our slant height is 17. How much is this guy? Eight. Why do we have the same basis here on our triangle? Because it's a square, so we're doing half of the same as All right, go ahead and find your height. Find your height. No, she actually has to go two minutes, so she should stay. Right while you think it's all the way
Or you can do community property. So like up here, I did community property where I switched my two pieces. Oh, I see. Yeah. Well, can you be feeling multiplied multiple 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 multi
Is there that does not understand how we got the 26K? Would like me to explain it a different way? Okay. So then our circumference is 2 pi r or pi diameter. What's my diameter going to be? 6 root 3. Good. So our pi times diameter or 6 root 3 times pi. I do not recommend you write it like this. I recommend that you instead write it like this. I highly recommend you write it like that. Why? Nicole, is a question? Yeah. Okay. Why would I prefer you write it like this? Yeah, very good. When you guys write it next to after the radical, some of you, I won't name names, but some of us are not very um, meticulous with our writing. And you would write it like this. Is my pi under or is my pi out? And if I were to see this, that would be wrong, because I'm not sure what you're trying to communicate. So in math, we always write our radicals last, so we avoid any confusion with that. So I would recommend you write it like this, with a unit subject, and not like this. If you want to write it like this, you may, but you're just taking that risk. Okay, um, questions on our first information we found so far? Let's go take a look at our volume over here. Our volume formula. What's our volume formula for a Good. One third area of our base, which is 27 pi, times our height, which is 3. So what's our total volume going to be? Which actually stole it. This is not yours. Do you need someone to call it? Yeah. I was actually detecting what you had first. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, what would 1 third times 27 pi times 3? Good, 27 pi. And this would be units here. Are you sure you had it in this class? Alright, then my lateral area is 1 half times our circumference. Times our slant height, which they gave us, was that a six? Uh, yeah. Okay. Oh, it's clearly not raining, so it's not Dude, all of these are. Yeah, it's not weird. I saw it off, then I took everything out of my bag. just drop me home. I look in your car a lot. Okay. So one half times six pi root three times six. What does that simplify down to? Six. All right. What's one half of six? Three. And three times six. Oh, I get it. Oh, I does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Units. All right, so our total surface areas are lateral, 18 pi root 3, plus one base, which is 27 pi. And um, so would that be 45 pi root 3? Yep. Is yeah, I cannot combine 18 pi root 3 and 27 pi. This does not become 45 pi root 3. Why? They're different radicals. Here I have 27 pi's. Here I have 18 pi root 3. So they're not the same type of value, so we cannot combine them together. So I'm just going to throw on unit square on the end. You'd have to have an equation for that. Okay. Otherwise, you're only taking uh, one over root three from thin air and put it into your All right, questions with this? Okay, go ahead and flip it over to the back side. I 
and I want you to go ahead and take a look at 11, 12, and 13. Um, you know, I'm not actually sure. Okay, 11, 12, and 13, these are what we call composite, sh uh, composite shapes, composite solids, which again is just simply taking shapes that we're familiar with and putting them together. What I'm just saying, so after you finish this, Okay, um, so for 11, 12, and 13, they're all asking for the volume. So for number 11, how would I go about finding the volume of that sheet? Can you explain to me what we're Good, find our volume of each one and add it together. How about for 12, what would we do? Cone and cylinder volumes, slap them together. Now, read number 13. So how would I find the volume of that? Find the volume of the cones with side of the cone from the cylinder. Great job, Kathy. Alright, so it says we've got this cone. Sorry, we've got this cylinder. We have this cone inside. And we are trying to find the volume outside the cone and inside the cylinder. So we're going to find the volume of the cylinder, find volume of the cone. And what do we do? Subtract. What are we subtracting from what? Subtract the volume of the cone from the cylinder. Good. Subtract the cone away from the cylinder, or in other words, cone of my, sorry, cylinder minus cone. Now, these aren't too bad because they're asking about volume, but it's possible that instead of asking about volume, they would have asked about surface area. So I want to talk about that. We're not necessarily going to go through and find the surface area. I just want to talk about how we would find this range of our shapes. So that if you do encounter that, you would know what to do. All right, so for our surface area for these. For number 11, um, how would I go about finding our surface area for that shape? Find the surface area of the top cone, find the surface area of the bottom cone, find the surface area of the base, and then subtract the base from the sum of all three. Good. So our surface area includes the base, doesn't it? Your surface area includes that base. So you could find the surface area at the top and at the bottom, and then just subtract away your bases for top and bottom. What else could we do? Kelly? Lateral, lateral, lateral area for both shapes. I don't know why, but it is kind of a tongue twister. Good. Our lateral area for each shape. Because our lateral area doesn't include the bases, right? So our lateral area is just that outside part. So either way would be fine. Totally up to you. Um, so again, you could do surface area of each and subtract away your bases twice. Or you could do lateral area of top and lateral area of the bottom. So I'm just going to go right for this one. Lateral area with a little T for top. And our lateral area with a little B for bottom. Good. Now 12, it gets a little different. We have a cylinder tilt on top. How would I find my surface area for number 12? Again, there's multiple ways. Okay, Kathy's going to tell us. So our first, we find the surface area of the sphere. Okay. Right, and then we find the code. And then you would subtract the bases. Good. How many times am I subtracting away a base? Once. Is it once or is it twice? Once. <laughs> if we do that where we find surface area of our cylinder and surface area of our cone, how many bases do we need to subtract away? Two. Two, because we have the base for the cylinder, I need to take that away. And the base for my cone, I need to take that away. Good, so that's an option. Jonah, did you have another one? I did, yeah. So uh, you find the surface area for the cone and the lateral area for the cylinder. Good. So you could do surface area of the cone and lateral area of our cylinder. Now, why would we be allowed to do the entire surface area for a cone and we don't have that base? How would that be okay for that example? Kelly? It's the same as the bottom of the base. Good. It's the same as the base for our cylinder. So in finding the surface area for a cone, we've taken care of that base on the bottom, and then we can just add our lateral area. Good. Um, and then another way you can do it is just lateral area, lateral area, plus one base. So again, totally up to you. Um, I think I'm going to go with Jonas because I think that's the most concise. So we have our surface area of our cone, and then just our lateral area of our cylinder. Okay, Ooh, so 13, this shape. How do I find the surface area for this guy? Meaning anything that air touches. If I were to have to paint this without going inside the shape, it's glued together. If I were to have to paint any surface on here, how would I find the surface area? Surface area. You do have to find the surface area. Can't you do like a base and put it on the water? Okay. Plus 
Like surface area. Yeah. Okay, so surface area for cylinder and take away one of our bases. And surface area, the cone, and we'd have to take away that base as well. Good. Yeah. What's another one that I do this? Jonah? Lateral area of the cone and then surface area of the cylinder minus one of the bases. Good. So lateral area of our cone. Good job. Surface area of the bit of the cylinder, but take away one base. Good. Good job. Nicole? Good job. I could have gone out. Lateral area of the cylinder and then surface area of the cone. Good. Lateral area of the cylinder, surface area of the cone, that base on the cone and take care of the base of the cylinder. So wouldn't that just be the same thing as number 12? Yeah. It ends up being the same because we have the laterals of both the cone and the cylinder and just one base. So again, any of those ways that we described, 12 would also work for 13. Can you do something by what? Like, water? Like the, volume, like something the, water? Um, the volume is like if you were to fill it up with water, how many cubic yeah. fibers would it be? That's okay, um, so questions with that, and that you don't have to find your surface area for this, but I just want to make sure we're aware of that in case we're across that. Okay, um, uh, let's take a look at, I think it's number 10. All right, I want you guys to go ahead and first take a minute and attempt number 10. I'm going to see how we're doing, how far we get, and then we'll go over there. Give us a radius of 7, so we can find our area of our base, 49 pi. Do I know my height? No. So we're kind of stuck here because there's two variables. So let's see what else they can give us. 
and here's our total surface area. So I went ahead and looked at the equation for that. Now my total surface area is my lateral area, which is one half circumference times our slant height. So I have one half. What's my circumference? 14 pi. Slant height, do we know that? In Martin's please pardon the interruption. The 8th Annual Page Casino Cup Soccer Tournament will be held on Saturday, May 18th from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. on the HHS Soccer Field. The soccer tournament needs 8 teams with 14 players. If you are interested in playing in the soccer tournament, please see Mr. Q below at PK18. All money raised goes towards the Page Casino ESOL Scholarship Fund. Sign up now. Hello, Vernon. It's prom season. On May 11th at 8 p.m. We are having a party like it's the Roaring Twenties. Juniors and seniors buy the prom tickets from April 8th to April 21st for $65. After that, the price goes up. Buy your tickets during all lunches and on highschoolbucks.com. See you there. Time is running out to buy your yearbook at the reduced price of $65. Look for the QR codes posted around the school to order online or pay by cash or check to the hands of on 6 c Starting April 28th, the book will be $80 by cash or check. If you Okay, so we don't know our slant height, but they did give us our total surface area. So now we have the equation. We can solve for slant height. Once I have my slant height and I put that in, then I can solve for my height. And then once I have that, I can put it in solve. All right, what's our homework? Finish both worksheets and next class is it? Quiz. Oh, yes, that's what comes. Yes. How long do I have? Yeah, 45 minutes. So you'll just check your first. Alright. You ready to go? I'll stick it home fast. Have a good day. Uh,